know. This week on Kentucky Field, we're making a trip west to hunt the state's largest and hardest running rabbits, swampers. That dog ran that rabbit a long way, didn't he? Yeah, it? probably a good three or 400 yards. Next, we're back in the deer stand and looking to fill our 2021 buck tag. This deer's gonna walk right under us. Then, we grab a rod and reel and catch all kinds of fish alongside Jim and Eli Doom. Oh, white bass. There you go. There you go. It's all next on Kentucky Field. Such a pretty fish. Beautiful. This pond is plum floated with frogs. They're everywhere in here. <laughs> Yeah, this is a good fish right here. Really good fish. Come here, girl. Hey, boy. That's a big rabbit. Nice job. Yes! Yes! <laughs> My first musket. <laughs> first say Leo. Yeah, we're we'll keeping it to keep it. Here it goes. Boom! Oh, oh. Wow, that happened. and welcome to Kentucky Field. I'm your host, Chad Miles. Join us as we journey the Commonwealth in search of outdoor adventure. Hey, modern firearm season for deer may have passed, but that doesn't mean you still can't get outdoors and have a great time. So let's now head to Western Kentucky in search of swamp rabbits. We're here in Graves County getting ready to do a rabbit hunt. So I'm here with Paul. Tell me a little bit about the dogs you brought today. I got a big male tricolored. His name's Smoke. I got him as a pup. And then I got a little tricolored female. Her name is Tess. And then I got a, a blue tick male in here named Trump. He's only 10 months old, but he's doing really good this year. How many days a week do you usually run these dogs? If it's real hot, two times a week, but mainly two to four times a week every week. It don't matter July or August, year round. This part of the state, a lot of times you can find both cottontails and swamp rabbits. This piece of property we're on, what do we expect to find here? Mainly swamp rabbits. Okay. You got a buddy that came with you that also brought some dogs, right? Yeah. Well, let's go get those dogs out as well. All right. So, Troy, how many dogs you bring today? I brought four today. This is Echo. This is Genie. This is Festus. And this is Leon. Just a fast-footed, strong dog that's got all-day hunt, you know. Uh, <laughs> I look forward to seeing how he's going to finish. He's doing a really good job. We've put in a lot of time to get him ready for a hunt like this. I'm excited to get out here. Hopefully these dogs get to wrap it up pretty quick. All right, here we go. They're all taking off to that one dog he just opened. Oh, they just saw it. Run over there. Let's get a move on. Here he comes, right to you, Brian. Shoot him. Shoot him, Cody. Good shot. It looks like they may have one down. Now, this is not a big swamper. This is a smaller size swamp rabbit. This right. could very easily be confused for a cottontail, but this is what we're going to be seeing a lot of today. You Hopefully think, some huh? bigger ones. You know what? They get too much bigger. Four of them turns into a load. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> well, nice job. Nice shot. <laughs> I believe you could have shot that in off the porch. <laughs> Almost did. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like there's a bunch of scat on this log. This is a sure sign that you got swamp rabbits, isn't This it? is a good sign that they're swamp rabbits. Sometimes you'll catch a big hill rabbit, jump on a stump or something and do this, but nine times out of a 10, this is what a swamp rabbit will do. You know, he tries to get up out of the water and use the bathroom. Another thing that you can look at, the rabbits that eat the bottom of the trees, the bark off the trees. This is a good sign that this place has got a lot of swamp rabbits in it. They're working it back. They went almost 600 yards and they're working their way back. Pretty big running swamper. Here it comes, coming straight to you. There it goes. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Good job, Ken. Did you get it? About time. 
I thought we started yelling the British are coming. That rabbit had a lot of heat right off the bat. You know, he was getting sight chased hard. Oh, yeah. Golly, what a rabbit. Now there's a swamper. Well, they're finishing the track up. He killed the rabbit. We like to let them finish the track and show them it's dead before we go on to another rabbit. How far out are they, Paul? 310. 310. They're out of hearing distance, but they'll be bringing him back here in a little bit. People who either don't use electronics or they're really not paying attention to how far the dog's running on a normal cottontail. And you call them hill rabbits, right? Yeah. About 200 is kind of normal, wouldn't you say? 200 on a cottontail, yeah. If you get a hill rabbit that goes around 300, you really start thinking, you know, what's going on. About 375. Swamp rabbits, they got a lot of different advantage over a dog or a human. The cypress trees, they're hollowed out at the bottom, and they crawl up in there and you can't get them out. Rather than go into a hole, which they get might the bottom be full of, of water, tree, they'll just go into a tree. Just anything to get a dog or coyote or bobcat off of it. Oh, they're coming back. That's what I like most about it. Whenever they pick him back up and they just start hammering, that's the best part. You see it, shoot it. There it goes. There you go. That's his first swamper. That's your first one? No, oh, first swamper. Fantastic, man. There it is. Here it goes. Oh. That one dog almost caught it. Here it comes. Here he comes, Here Cody. Comes. Here he comes. We're going to let him run. Y'all better be ready. Here he comes. Just got me a little cottontail rabbit. Shot over him a little bit the first time. Man, what a great race. That dog ran that rabbit a long way, didn't it? Yeah, he? probably a good three or 400 yards. Yeah, you know? for a cottontail, that was a pretty good race. But now, we've kind of come out of some real thick swampy areas over yeah. here in the more fields. So yeah, uh, over here, we're going to get into more of these style rabbits. OK. Hey, nice shot. Thank you, man. Hey, we got a lot of good looking area right here to hunt. I think we're getting ready to get into it. Find him, find him, find him. That rabbit knows that it's his field all the way around it. This is a little peninsula that comes out, so he's looking for a hole to get in there, and those dogs are trying to push him. There he is, coming at you. Too far away. They had this rabbit in here, and that rabbit came out, but it was out of range, but I've been carrying this gun all day. It was time to shoot. There you go, get him. Go. There he goes. Hey, there's two, there's two. So I think they just got that rabbit. Someone yelled, there's two. Good shot. So I think they've got that second rabbit. It looks like they just took it. So that was great, man. I'll tell you what, for the dogs to get in that log jam, that's probably the safest place in this county. They got down there in the very, very bottom and just bumped that rabbit out and lo and behold, jumped a second rabbit. Looks like we got shots at both of them. Man, that is some great dog work right there. Well, I'll tell you what, this was a great experience because we got to come down here today and hunt two completely different terrains that held different species of rabbits. You guys are very passionate about your dog work and today was a lot of fun watching these dogs run a lot of distance. We had a great time. Thank you guys. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you. it. If you're an archery hunter here in the state of Kentucky, you know that that week before modern farm season is the best week to get in a deer stand and punch that buck tag. Today we're, uh, we're hunting this farm we've been at all year and the beans have now been cut. So they've been removed. It's time for us to make our way into the woods. We're going to a stand. The last time I hunted this stand in the evening, I had a pretty good buck chase a doe right by me. I made a couple of burr, burr noise trying to get that deer to stop. Paid no attention, it kept on running. And that's pretty typical when they're starting that rut phase. Hopefully tonight I can get in this stand and have some deer come through 
chasing, we're going to do some rattling, going to do a little grunting, and hopefully that buck that I've seen or a couple other deer that I've seen out here will show up and get in bow range. As a diehard archer and bow hunter, I would much rather fill this tag with my bow and arrow than have to wait till tomorrow when the modern firearm season starts and try to fill it then. But uh, we'll see how it goes. You won't get a deer if you don't get out in the stand. Bad conditions, the rain, can't stop us. We're gonna try to get out there and make this happen. So we're watching this doe out here in this field. And this deer is out there messing around. And I'll look back. And this buck is making its way away from us. I know it's going to get to the river. It's going to have a barrier. So I start grunting. And I grunt three or four times, thinking maybe I can bring that deer this way. It starts running down here toward us. Well, the way this is set up, I get it full draw. And when the deer stops, it's sitting down here. I can't get a shot because of the angle with my camera guy here. <laughs> so the deer is standing there, perfect range. I can't get a shot, can't get a shot, can't get a shot. Finally, 
I was able to get a shot off. Hopefully this will all pull together. Oh, I think that's, there it is. There it is right there. Oh, sweet. That deer didn't go 130 yards. Oh, sweet. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. This is not a huge deer, but I'll tell you what, considering how much time I spent in the stand and to get this buck with my bow, literally the night before gun season, I could not be more excited. Now I don't think I put a great shot on this deer. It literally is on the other side, but the deer was slightly quartering away. And what, whatever happened, it didn't go but 100, 120, 130 yards, and here it is. Very wide deer, not very long tines, but I couldn't be, I could not be more excited. Tickled to have this deer. Buck tag is punched. What a great season. I'm so excited. What a year. When the temperatures start to fall here in Kentucky, that doesn't mean that the fishing has to end. As a matter of fact, many experienced anglers will tell you that is when it starts getting good. So you ready to go fishing? Yep. You got an anchor? What's an anchor do? Holds the boat. Holds the boat, that's right. You know, Jim, you and I have fished many a times together, but today is a little different for a couple different reasons. Yeah, we've never fished the middle of December before, and we got a little buddy here that, <laughs> that begs me to go fishing, so. This is your grandson, Eli. He loves to fish, doesn't he? He does. He's fished you enough that he's pretty much self-sufficient, isn't he? He is. I turn him loose in the boat, and I have to tell him to get off the edge of the boat every once in a while, but you know. <laughs> Other than that, he's really good. Hey, Eli, what kind of fish do you like to catch the most? Small mouth bass. Small mouth bass? That's my favorite, too. I saw you got a little white minnow looking bait on there, a little swim bait. You think that's what we're gonna catch them on today? Yep. We're kind of in between Kentucky Lake and the Ohio River. So hopefully we get down here and find a spot and catch us some big fish. I'm gonna catch a hundred. You're gonna catch a hundred? Yep. I'm gonna try to catch the first fish. Look at this, you ever caught one of these? These are pretty rare around here. This little stick fish here. You wanna take a bite? No. No, okay. Weather's too nice. They don't wanna bite on a good day. We need a little bit of sleep. They don't play fair. I think any of them playing fair right now. <laughs> I don't have much patience with them. They're not biting here, so let's move out a little deeper. Sounds good. We've got live bait in case we really have to try to catch something. We're gonna trick so, them at first and then... Eli, don't you be eating the bait. I'm not eating the bait. You know you eat the bait. <laughs> All righty, give her a shot. Whew. Fish on, looky here. Looky there. Oh, we should have doubled because I just got bit too. I'm gonna squeeze through and get the net. Who you got there, buddy? Oh, a white bass. There you go. There you go. Hey, first fish. Nice job. Need some help? Mm-hmm. Hey, you caught dinner. You gonna put him in the cooler? Yep. I know you like to eat fish because I saw you eating the bait a while ago. Looky here. I found Eli's spot. I'm gonna catch all of Eli's fish out uh -oh. of there. Uh-oh. I'm on to him. What do you got there, oh, drum? Me. <laughs> the good old drum. Hey, we may have found them. We've caught three fish in three different species. Three species. Check that out. <laughs> of course, I get the one that we really don't want to eat. <laughs> well, this is the spotted bass I got here. Black bass species number one. All right, Eli, it's time we get serious. Why? So we can catch some fish, dude. Now that didn't look real serious. 
What do you think this is, Eli? You never know when you're in the river what you got. White bass, I bet. White bass. Look at here. It's a dandy. What do you got there? It's a pretty nice one. I caught the biggest. <laughs> That's a good one there, buddy. We might be able to catch several of these. Being this time of year, they'll school up tight. Well, they fight so well. I'm gonna work them over. Another white bass. Hey, we're on to something now. This feels like a drum. Oh, is that right? Yes. That's okay. As long as I catch more fish than Eli. <laughs> drum count. You know, if I catch enough fish to eat for supper, if I'm wanting something to eat, yeah. and then catch the rest of the drum, I don't care. Look at there, got a drum. Now, I don't feel so bad now catching <laughs> all the drum. I'm glad you could get in on some uh, of that. Now, you can't eat those, though, can't you? I got a feeling that a man who's been commercial fishing, you've probably tried a drum, haven't you? I have tried drum. Some of them are okay. Got another fish on. This does not feel like a drum. <laughs> I think we may have a white bass again. Yes, sir. Another one for the skillet. There you go. Look at my net man back here, Jim. All he right. saw my rod bend. He said, this guy needs some help. That's what I'm trying to do is help. <laughs> Got him. Look at that. Man, you have a spot in my boat any day. I didn't say a word. I just set the hook. I looked down. Old Lee, I was grabbing the net, dipping that big old white bass. You know, there's only certain times of the year that I really catch myself targeting these, and it's usually in their spring runs. Much different uh, in the part of the state that I live in where you've got Nolan and Salt River and the Dix River that have so many white bass that run up in the spawn, but they can be caught year round. Sure. And uh, man, they're so fun to catch. Fun to catch, and they're actually one of my favorite to eat. They all, oh, they're really, really, really good to eat. Go check another spot. What kind of bird is that right there? An uh, eagle. What kind of eagle? American. American bald eagle? You know, Jim, you've been a fishing guide now for over 14 years. You are an avid fisherman. You love getting new people involved in fishing and a true conservationist. I've actually learned a lot from just watching other people fish. Might even learn something from Eli here. Got one, Eli. Catch him. Uh oh! Here we go, here we go. I think I might tickle him while he's fighting that fish. <laughs> no. <laughs> Boy, he's being mean on you, isn't he? He's got him a big one. Hope his net guy don't miss. What do we got? Oh, he's got him a big drum. Looky there, buddy. What is that? A drum. Grab a hold of him, hold him up there. That is awesome, that is such a good fish. All right, what are you gonna do with him? All right, you gonna put him back? There you go. Hey, Eli. All the leaves are falling off the tree except for those right there. What is that? Miss your toe. That's right. You got a girlfriend? You gotta take her under that tree. I got a fish. What do you got there? Is that a sauger? Yep. Some teeth on there. That in there it might be 16. I believe it'll work. Hey, now it's a party. Got a fish on. Uh oh. Got a fish on what? A fish on. Oh, it's another sauger. Let's get that joker in the boat. Jim is on him. That's a better one, even. Well, Jim, I had a great time in the boat with you today. And I tell you what, out of all the times we've been out, this may have been the most enjoyable just watching his passion. He loves to fish, so. Hey, you got a cooler full for the skillet, so. Oh, that's your fish. No, that's yours. Good job. <laughs> we had some yesterday. <laughs> Did you? Yeah. Hey, when you start your guide service, you going to take me fishing someday? I want to fish tomorrow. You want to fish tomorrow? It's hard to believe that he's five years old. He's just really, really good. Yeah, he's a pretty good kid, I reckon. Now let's check in and see who else has been out having fun in this week's Ones That Didn't Get Away. Here we have 10-year-old Logan Brumfield with a nice doe that he took on his grandfather's property. Nice job. Here we have a nice buck that was taken Pendleton County by Chase Colvin. Nice deer. Amber Stampers has reason to smile. She took this nice 10-point buck while hunting with her dad. Check out this super impressive buck that was taken by Mary Stamper in Breathitt County. Nice job. 
Here we have Samantha Stamper who was hunting on opening morning of the 2020 rifle season with her mom. Nice job. There are so many great reasons to get outdoors this time of year here in the state of Kentucky. Make sure you make time to get outside and enjoy yourself. And remember, hunting and fishing on private property is a privilege. Always ask permission and thank the landowner. Until next week, I'm your host, Chad Miles, and I hope to see you in the woods or on the water.